Lord Jesus Christ to this broadcast of the Sunday morning worship service from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in California, Missouri. We are happy to have you with worship with us on this 23rd Sunday after Pentecost, October 27th, 2024. The congregation prepares itself for worship as the organ music is provided by Twyla Duval, who, pray, who plays the prelude and introduction to the opening hymn. The procession of the cross is carried by Michael Ashley, and he has entered the name of the church. The outlight for today's service is Faith Ashley, and she she's lighting the can, altar candles. Pastor Copper has entered the name of the church with the procession, procession. The broadcast of the worship service and the flowers that grace our altar this morning are given in celebration of God's gifts of grace and the baptisms and anniversaries on November 1st of Jonah and Jordan Wickham. The opening hymn for the worship service is A Mighty Force is Our God, located on page 656 in the Lutheran Service Book. Following the opening hymn, Pastor Copper will lead the congregation in today's worship service from setting four, beginning on page 203. Our worship bulletins can be found on the church website at www.stpaulslutheran1860.com. Under the bulletin board menu, Pastor Copper will now offer the confession and absolution.
Good morning. Happy and blessed Reformation Day for us all. Today we celebrate the reforms in the church by Dr. Martin Luther. It is a great day to celebrate the freedom we receive through the Word of God. We like to welcome all of you who are here, especially those who are visiting us. Welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church. Also, if you are following us on Facebook, be more than welcome to our service today. We will start asking God's presence. If you can, please stand. Start today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. For the Lord our God is a merciful God. Therefore, the Lord waits to be gracious to you, and therefore, he exalts himself to show mercy to you. For the Lord is the God of justice. Blessed are those who wait for him. Let us confess our sins to our Heavenly Father. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgives us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sakes forgive all your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The first reading for this Sunday is the reading of the Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Those who sow with tears will rip with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you know your people's greatest needs through the working of your Holy Spirit. Grant us grace to receive your mercy and blessings every day of our lives. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who with the Father and Holy Spirit is one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone. Thank you for being here today and welcome those joining us on uh, KRLL and on Facebook. The Old Testament reading for today is Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 7 through 9. This is what the Lord says. Sing with joy for Jacob. Shout for the foremost of the nations. Make your praises heard and say, Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I will bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the ends of the earth. Among them will be the blind and the lame, expectant mothers and women in labor. A great throng will return. They will come, we they will come with weeping. They will pray as I bring them back. I will lead them beside streams of water on a level path where they will not stumble. Because I am Israel's father and Ephraim is my firstborn son. This is the word of the Lord. God. Our epistle reading this morning from the book of Romans, chapter 3, verses 19 through 28. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared, declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known to that to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Where then is boasting? It is excluded. Because of what law? The law that requires works. No, because the law that requires faith. For we maintain that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. This is the word of the Lord.
If you can, please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter, verses 31 to 36. Glory to you, O Lord. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you told, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. For if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Let us confess our faith with the words of the Ninth in Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, make it of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he'll come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation may be seated.
May the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of us in this Reformation Day. And there is salvation in none of us, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. The words of Luke in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, the words to which I would like to start my sermon today. The scripture, brothers and sisters, claims that salvation comes exclusively in the name of Jesus Christ. Many people object to this claim in our days, as the Bible and the Word of God is just one more piece of literature. They think of Christianity as one of many options. Today, as we celebrate Reformation Sunday, we are to be reminded of what the Word of God is. The only absolute truth we have, the Bible is the Word of God. We learned that in Catechism, remember? Does the Bible contain, or, does the Bible, or is the Bible the Word of God? The Bible is the Word of God. Inerrant, holy. It means no mistakes. It means it's eternal. It means that it was good for your, for your kids, for your children. It's good for you and will be good for any other generations after you. This is what Reformation is all about. It is about the Word of God. And where, to put the pla where placed the Word of God so everybody will have access to you and will know that the Word of God is about Jesus Christ his incarnation, his suffering, and his death for us. Jesus proclaimed to his followers in our text, the text of the Gospel of John, if you hold to my teachings, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And he gets this reaction from some of the Jewish, or the Jewish who were following him, Oh, Jesus, we were not slaves. We are just fine the way we are. Yes, they were slaves to their own tradition. They were slaves to their own theology. They were slaves to the law that asked them to do more and more and more. But the law, they could not satisfy. In our days, we have several, if not many, um, countries where well, we can call them Muslim countries. I don't think I'm going to offend. I don't think anybody's Muslim here. Just kidding. I know you're not. In most of, the, most of the Muslim countries, you have to do. In many religions, even Christian religions, you have to do. For the Pharisees, they had to do something. They despise Jesus and the word and despise, uh, despise everything that Jesus did and will do in the cross for them. So they are enslaved by the laws, their own laws. In Martin Luther's time before Reformation, people are enslaved by the laws. They were slaves of the rituals. You go to mass, you pay, and then you free someone from hell. If you give so much money, then you buy a place in heaven. If you give so much money to the church and you go to mass every Sunday, then your father who is in hell waiting to be freed and to go to heaven will go because you paid. The word of God, the absolute truth was covered by a system that covered the truth. So Martin Luther bravely, bravely uncover the truth. And he says, it's only through the word, only through faith, and only through grace you can find God and salvation. 
the true Christian life was hidden from people in also a language that was foreign to most people. Latin, everything would be done in Latin. Who knows Latin? Well, people could barely read in Martin Luther's time. So Martin Luther starts schools. If people can learn how to read, they will also learn how to read the Bible. And Reformation took place in Germany with education. People need to know the truth. That's why we have church. That's why we have Bible studies. Because people, we, you and I, we need to know the truth. The truth that saves us. And it is all in the scripture. But for Martin Luther, he couldn't continue the way he was. Because people were going to hell. He himself didn't, didn't have peace in his conscience. Because he was always thinking that God would never forgive him for his sins. And as much as he could do, as, as much as he offered sacrifices, as much as he go to Mass, as much as he even beat himself when he was monk, he didn't have peace with God. So what he has to do, he has to go to the Bible, and he has to go to the truth and the Bible. To recognize he is a sinful man, but above all, to see that there is a Savior hidden in those pages of the Bible that for so long he could not see. It is by faith and faith alone that you will be saved. Not by the things you do, and not but only by the things Jesus did for you on the cross. This is the absolute truth of the Bible. When we confess with our heart Jesus Lord and Savior, when we repent of our sins, heaven is ours. As Paul reminds us in our second reading, the reading of Romans, there is no distinction since all have sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. We all have sinned, and so we are all captive to sin. None of us can free ourselves, nor the Jews in Jesus' time, nor the people in Martin Luther's time, nor the people in our time. No matter how hard we try, we cannot help but fall short of the glory of God over and over every single day of our lives. We are all the same in that way. We disappoint ourselves. We disappoint each other. We disappoint God. We are all ruled by sin. Whether it's greed, pride, fear, apathy, hatred, envy, you name it. And you get the idea. You can fill in the blank yourself. Whatever it is that you are captive to, it is a sin. We are ruled by it. This is simply the truth. And until we know and accept this truth, we will never indeed be free. We all come into this world as spiritually blind, deaf, and lame. In other words, we are unaware of God's goodness to us unwilling to listen to his promises and unable to walk according to his word. By nature, our souls are spiritual wastelands devoid of real life. But into that desert, into that desert steps Jesus Christ. As he said, he is himself the water of life. He came into our sin, darkened world to announce our salvation and make it happen. He sacrificed on the cross, paid our debt to God. We are fully and freely forgiven for the sake of Jesus and through faith in him. 
Today, as we celebrate the day of reformation, and with it the most wonderful of all changes that took place in the church after many years of being buried in sins and lies, we come across this beautiful Bible verse from John. So, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. How about today, folks? How about today? People cry from freedom nowadays. Freedom from political oppression, racial freedom, sexual equality. Our society pushes for individual freedom, self-expression, all kinds of freedom people want. People fight for the freedom to choose their sexual lifestyles and to set their standards of right and wrong. And as election comes closer, people, we need to say no to abortion. We have to say no to gambling. We have to say no to trend, transgender thing. This is not freedom. This is a slavery. Abortion, gambling, and all those laws they are trying to pass is just sin against the fifth and seventh commandment. It's against God. It's going to bury people even further and further down in their sins. And as church, we have to stand for the truth, just as Martin Luther did in the past. Jesus already set us all free. Let us not throw that freedom to the trash can. This is what Reformation is all about. There is just one truth, and the truth is the Bible, and everything that goes against the truth of the Bible is the devil works trying to make people go into hell. So here it is. Jesus coming to the world first to tell the Pharisees they cannot be saved only following their rules. He raises people like Martin Luther and many other reformers to tell people in their time and age it is only through the gospel of Jesus that you can be set free. And the word, the same word that set Martin Luther free and many other people free, it is the word that is available to us today so we can look every single day, we can read and ponder and meditate and see freedom is mine. As long as I hang to the cross of Jesus, I ask for forgiveness. And I follow him. First John says, If we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. And the whole, and the whole epistles of John are all about fellowship. And they are all about how can I deal with my brothers and sisters when they sin. You see, freedom comes when we worship God, the only truth and when we respect our brothers and sisters who are sitting beside us. This is what freedom is all about. It is about worshiping God and helping our fellow Christians. <coughs> Someone says, Lutherans, Lutherans don't believe in change. This is false. We do believe in change. We believe that through the power of the Holy Spirit we will continue to change lives to Christ when we stand for the truth of Jesus and the truth of Reformation. We will continue to change lives and bring them from the darkness to the light of Christ when we stand for faith, for love, and the truth of the Bible. So in this Reformation Day, brothers and sisters, we not only 
say out and loud that we are Lutherans and saved by grace, but we also say, Jesus Christ, pay for all my sins and gave me freedom so I can live my life as a Christian, knowing that because of Jesus Christ sacrificed on the cross, I have life in abundance and life everlasting. In Jesus' name, amen. The ushers from Dream Summoner's team come forward to receive the offering plates while choir music is played. We invite you to listen to the worldwide message of the Lutheran Hour broadcast on station KRLL at 7.30 a.m. each Sunday. Today's Lutheran Hour was underwritten with the memorial contributions each weekday morning at 6.15 a.m. The California Ministerial Alliance conducts a five-minute devotional program on KRLL. And we invite you to listen to these uh, broadcasts. Uh, to begin your day with these messages. This week's devotions are offered by Reverend Tracy Thompson of the New Life Christian Church, California, Missouri. Today's broadcast is underwritten in celebration of God's gift, gift of grace. The baptism anniversary is on November 1st of Jonah and Jordan Wickham. We are happy to provide our broadcast to you, but they are very costly. In order to continue these broadcasts, we will need financial help. If you value if you value our broadcast and would care to help support them, we urge you to send your donation to St. Paul's Lutheran Church, 207 North Owen Street, California, Missouri, 65018. We would greatly appreciate your support in helping us continue these broadcasts. Let us talk with God in prayer. <clears throat> Mighty God, you have great power, and yet you act with mercy. Teach those who lead us to use power rightly for the preservation of order, the accomplishment of justice, the protection of life, and the defense of the weak. Gives us wise, godly, and faithful leaders who will follow your commands and serve with integrity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, remember all who face adversity of any kind, especially, Father, we pray for Amy Connell, Donald Clutter, Joe Green, James Hurt, Chris Youngmeyer, Gary Kendrick, Lucas Manley, Wyatt, and Troy Morris, 
Melissa Reynolds, Michael Rax, Eileen Sheriff, Gerald Taylor, Sandy Taylor, John Turner, Albert Kendrick, Dorothy Stubinger, and Bill Seavey. Father, we also pray for our shut-ins, Clarice, Alexander, Karen Hagmeyer, Ruth Higgins, Jerry Kisu, June Kister, Bill, and Ruth Meyer. Father, comfort them by your Holy Spirit that they would acknowledge their afflictions as the manifestation of your fatherly will. Lord, in your mercy. God of grace, keep us steadfast in your word and prevent our wayward hearts from following false gospels that lead us away from you. Provide your church with faithful pastors who preach in purity and joy that we are saved by your grace alone, through faith alone, because of Christ alone. Lord, in your mercy. God of mercy and compassion, of grace and God of reconciliation, pour your power upon all your children in the Middle East, Jews, Muslims, and Christians, Palestinians, and Israelis. Let hatred be turned into love, fear to trust, despair to hope, oppression to freedom. That violent encounters may be replaced by loving embraces, and peace and justice could be experienced by all. Look upon the children and the most vulnerable in those regions and protect them, Heavenly Father. Dear God, you invite us daily to remember the blessings we receive through baptism and Lord's Supper. Thanks, Lord, for both sacraments and the opportunities to be transformed and purified through them. Today we rejoice with Jonah and Jordan Wickman and everyone in this congregation for the grace and peace bestowed upon us throughout our baptisms. May we always be faithful to you and never get astray from your perfect and eternal will. Father, pray, we pray for our brothers and sisters who are mourning the death of a loved one, especially the family and friends of Dennis Fisher and Samantha Giese. Remind the family, the friends, about your love and your grace that endures forever. Comfort their hearts with the certainty of the resurrection and the eternal life. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Amen. And as we prepare our hearts and minds to receive the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, I invite you to open the hymnal on page 208. And if you can, please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should in all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all, all the company of heaven, we loud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying... as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
Close the day's worship service. The congregation will sing, Stand Up, Stand It Up for Jesus, which is on page 660 of our hymnal. You're listening to the Sunday morning divine worship service from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in California, Missouri. It has been our pleasure to have you worship with us at St. Paul's Lutheran Church through the facilities of KRLL Radio. May God's holy angels watch over you and your loved ones, and we hope you will join us again in worship next Sunday. Your, natura- your announcer has been Sam Turner.
us pray. O God of the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh. We thank you for that, for his sake. You have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.